Okay, so uh, today I'm going to discuss with you um, this topic regarding our configuration, how we deal with that, and how we, we which tools we may use for configuration and which pitfall, uh, pitfalls we may face with during this process. And uh, as for me, it may look trivial uh for first glance but when we dive, uh, deep dive on this topic we may face it with different types of conf configuration on different levels begins from the compile time execution time we may use these uh different options that provide us golang uh, also we definitely may use some configuration of our api defining relationship with another um, systems and provide credentials for accessing them and maybe something else. Also, usually our uh, front-end part or web UI part also may have some config configuration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, when we're dealing with more complex system, the more complex our configuration, our configuration may, may be. And uh, I find this topic very trivial, uh, as I mentioned before. But uh, when we discussed in our project and uh, we have found a different approaches how we may deal with that. So let's start from the simple example. I think uh, many of you already uh, compiled this uh, for snippet in your mind and already knew the expected results. Mm, this like very trivial and straightforward approach to use some additional parameters from the execution. So when we are launching this application, uh, we may provide, we should provide uh, the additional parameters, uh, except the um, file name. After that, we may provide additional parameters. And these par parameters will appear in our SDD out. So this is like very simple, straightforward, but not very robust solution, because we, if we forget about these parameters, uh, our application will fail with panics, and also it's hard to um, provide additional information about these parameters, so we should knew about that and uh, somehow remember this information. Mm, next step is to use another package. It's a package flag that's also accessible in the standard uh, library. Uh, this package uh, provides more rich information about parameters. We may uh, set up the uh, type of these parameters. Uh, we may define the key for these parameters. Also provide some additional descriptions that will be shown when we launch our application with help and uh, see the possible options uh, for starting this application. And my question to you is, what is missing here in this code snippets? Any suggestion? Yeah, you uh, didn't parse the flex. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so it's like, I want to check your, yeah, this one. Uh, so uh, the often uh, problem that I found that usually people forget to parse. It's a uh, mandatory um, operation that launches process when we parsing our environment variables to our defined variables, yeah, our configuration. So without that line, this code doesn't work properly. It will compile, but uh, none of the parameters will be accepted, accepted by the application. Okay, but uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, another approach to use uh, our environment variables for configuration is like one of the 12 factors uh, approaches. Yep. And we also have for that uh, already integrated or provided solution in our standard library. It requires some additional um, code around to work with that. But anyway, it's work. And uh, I think on this, a lot of uh, a lot of existing solution already have built around. So let's see about them what we have so wiper is most uh famous one regarding the stars on github uh, but there, there are also quite uh production already so wiper is one of them case uh kelsey hightower and conf another one um joho good 
uh, go.env. This is used uh, for, for parsing .env files and grab parameters from there. Uh, as far as I remember, uh, it's for this file, set these variables to the environment and then uh, pull them from the environment variable, something like that. And another one, uh, I just name this package like env, yeah, that we may use. So let's move from the simplest one to more complex of them and take a look at them. So Caitlin and Tower provide uh, the, the, its own package for parsing and deal with environment variables. Uh, it's very rich functionality. Uh, all, uh, everything defined via structural text and uh, additional, there may be sometimes types like list supports. Uh, so uh, these parameters or the de delimiter between these elements also may be defined via the structural text. Uh, default values, maybe something, something more. And here we have some example of parsing these variables. So we have uh, one key is defined it with structured text, another one is grabbed by the name and will be capitalized. And also provide some additional prefix uh, for these uh, variables. As you see, we have like two um, environment variables with different approaches. And after, after processing, all these variables will be set to the structure. So uh, what's limits here? I think we limited with the structure and uh, necessity of call this process execution for each structure separately. And also we should define all these keys in the, our structure text. Any questions for the time or it's almost clear? Who is using on the project this package? Maybe it may provide some additional uh, feedback regarding it. Yeah, a certain advisor project used that. And one of the limitations for it, it uh, supports on the limited number of types that mm -hmm. you can use as the fields for the structure. And there is a duration, as I remember, but there is no time. And mm -hmm. as I know, you have no uh, option to provide your own type with customer showers, demo showers, and so on. So, mm -hmm. some, yeah, something like that. Yeah, all these packages, they try to cover not all these cases, but plenty of them, as for me. Okay, another very similar package and uh, use a pretty similar approach, I guess, but I have a uh, small API. As for me, and uh, also smallest impact to the your binary output is env package. So idea is the same. We define our keys in the structure tab uh, text. Uh, also support different types, maybe with similar limitation of the, the possibility variation of these types that you may use. So I'm not supposed to rely only on the standard types and <laughs> doesn't expect to cover some something more complex like time. Duration should be covered, as I know. Okay. And also we have this parse. I think uh, it's also returned an error and we may uh, check for this. In most of our projects, we use uh, this package and it's pretty enough for us, for our cases. But in new uh, project, we face it with another challenges, and I will discover it in the next uh, section. Maybe this one is like um, some layer between the use environment variables and use the files as a storage for default parameters, something like that. Uh, we may use different text, uh, structural text, and use different packages for parsing and setting these variables to the configuration. Uh, it provides more flexible approach. Uh, as a developer, we may define our logic above uh, how we treat our variables, what is the default uh, one should be, or what is the, have the highest priority, and uh, build our logic around that. So it's also possible approaches, uh, but this for me, it looks uh, pretty complicated. So maybe for some very tricky cases, it's maybe applied and it will work. But as, a, as a, uh, an example for our next steps, it's very nice, I think.
Okay, move next. Uh, next one is to use uh, Viper. I'm not sure about my navigation. Maybe I missed some slides, but anyway, uh, we may use Viper uh, for configuration. What's interesting, uh -huh, I definitely miss this one. Yep. So what Viper does, it's provide not only um, like nice, it's a solution for configuration. It also supports a dozen of different sources of this configuration. It could be like some buffers, some files, some um, remote systems. It also uh, covers the situation when our configuration is changed and should be re-uploaded or re in, in inside the application and applied uh, in the runtime. So all these complex uh, things are covered in the Viper, but also, um, bring us a new level of responsibility, how we deal and how we treat uh, this configuration and how we use this package. Okay, so a first step, uh, like we may define the source of our configuration, like file name or even add entire uh, directory to our application where our configuration may be. So we just define the file name, not the, the file extension so any extension will be checked and uploaded to as configuration one also we define the parse environment variables automatically uh, this means any of keys that will be found in the file will be checked in the, our environment as key of our environment variables but in a, a capitalized uh, variant of it uh, reading in config is like uh, something similar to parse. A wiper uh, store the configuration uh, inside, so provide additional access to this information uh, via its API. Also, we may bind to environment variable a variable directly. Uh, this this should be applied to when we doesn't use files as our initial source, and maybe some key will be missed in these files. And then we will have access to this variable. Uh, via get methods, different types, or we um, get all variables and obtain like map of these uh, settings. It looks pretty um, hard to use and require a lot of codes around it. And uh, we face it with uh, this problem in some of our projects and try to think how we can solve this and treat this uh, rich configuration like uh, reach possibility to configure our application in a more simpler way. Uh, let's define what's what's really uh, bring some value to our project, uh, what we are expected from our configuration packages and why we are going to use Viper, for example, not ANF package. So uh, first of all, we would have, uh, would like to have like a nice and easy navigation between our configuration. Uh, in big application configuration may be like a dozen a thousand of lines different parameters will, uh, that will be interact with each other and when we maintain such a code, a code base it's hard to add or edit some values or even find where they define it and where they use it so uh, it's nice to have like uh, splitting this configuration between different uh, parts or different uh, areas of responsibility also, we'd like to have easy uh, API for reading this configuration, uh, adding new stuff or editing default values. Uh, so it's also influenced on the packages that we are going to choose. Um, it also will be nice to have a possibility to parse this or read this configuration from different sources. Uh, not too much packages uh, allow us to do that. Uh, usually the package cover only one source of configuration. And uh, also configuration requires some additional logic inside, maybe some validation default values, uh, splitting default values if it's, we're talking about list of them. So some helpers function should be inside. It also will be nice to have. And so when we analyze all these things, uh, we uh, decide to develop our own uh, layer about, 
over the Viper package and provide some simple function like parse and what it uh, does it accept like structure that contains uh, the definition of the keys that's very interesting in. Uh, we doesn't assume that we have any file but it may have and uh, what it does is read the structure using the reflect package uh, grab all the necessary keys and then just bin this uh, key to the environment variables using viper and uh, it rely on viper and marshall um, functionality that's parsing or like reading the configuration from the different source of course this function wouldn't like uh, run uh, standalone it requires some additional configuration of the viper like automatic and reading from environment variables all the stuff that already was mentioned but it helps a lot to simplify our logics uh, to binding uh, to the environment variables also there are plenty of such helpers regarding to create uh, flags based on the, our configuration and define which of them should be used also we we define some logic to split our like public uh, configuration and private information. Uh, uh, it's used for, for some internal logic. We may send some uh, some configuration between the services, and uh, some of them it's possible to send like um, in open way. Another one should be defined and uh, avoiding like uh, as. Uh, arising in the log somewhere or something like that so for credential we use uh, more strict rules and try to apply it entirely in each project it's just uh, a simple example how we can use viper and simplify our life so it's not required from you if it's not necessary to use all api of viper in your project you just may use some helpers function that will cover all necessary cases I think uh, one more example that I'm trying to cover is how we treat our configuration. So uh, let's assume we have a clean architecture approach and try to uh, split our adapters for different packages. And as usually all of them uh, should contain its own uh, configuration. And here we go, like two different approaches. Or we store in all structures that configure each adapter separately in the config package or we create a configuration uh, struct that define all necessary configuration in the, each uh, package separately and then proceed in our application so it's like uh, both possible variants and it's up to teams to define the most appropriate approach that is easy to use in your daily routine. I think that's all from my side for today. Here we go, some links to the material, and uh, I encourage you to use uh, the necessary packages that cover your needs and uh, add some helpers to simplify your daily routine and not rely on the just uh, package API. That's all from my side. Maybe some questions and other stuff that you want to discuss. I would like to discuss the errors mm -hmm. about the parsing of the configuration. So I would talk about the env config, uh, mm -hmm. what okay. we are using right now, and there is no option for you to. Oh, no, not this one, but uh, I don't remember the other one. About maybe the... another one. Okay, maybe. So the problem is that what you you if you don't provide the default value, mm -hmm. uh, it treats uh, absence of the value as an error, and mm -hmm. I think it will just uh, print the error message and exit the application, and you have no ability about. Uh, check what was missing so you don't know what is the field what is the name of the uh, variable what that was expected uh, yeah you of course can see it in the log message but you can modify it 
So <coughs> you want to print uh, a message of the other format, let's say. So there is no chance for you to do that. Okay, and so this okay. leads us to question, what package do we choose and what's the common behavior of this package? So my assumption is that we, that configuration package uh, should provide some some additional functional to define which of configuration is uh, like required, which keys are required, and if it doesn't provide, then fail, and like use like zero values as default values if a parameter doesn't define. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, does Viper provide additional information about errors? Like uh, what the field was not provided or format is not correct for the field? This is a very tricky question because Viper doesn't rely on some uh, structure. So you should define, you should provide for Viper some source of the configuration in the file or in your code base define which case are important to you. So you like define uh, initially uh, what is the, um, our source of configuration or what we treat like our configuration parameters and then uh, parse some information from environment variable, for example. So you're able to like define the structure and then just call some parse. It doesn't provide such API. That's why uh, it's like dealing with default values in Viper it's, it's for me more easily because uh, you should provide something at least in, in file or in the code base. Am I answering your question? Uh, it was a bit more about errors, my question, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yeah, generally. Yeah, yes. so, so this is possible. <laughs> what what should uh, maybe the reason of the errors? Yeah. Yes. So yes. May, we may have some different uh, type of errors, and uh, what Viper does, it provides clean API, and all methods uh, return an error, and we can handle it. Yeah, so it's but your case when you doesn't define the default values and uh, want to read this from the error, it's like not not applicable for the viper, for example. It's due to the viper API configuration uh, API that handle this question. So it's API require you define the default value from the start. Yeah. Okay. But it's for me, a Viper very, uh, very rich uh, like package have a lot of possibility of use and misuse also. That's why you should be careful and pick what you really need and then use. Okay, any other questions? Uh, yeah, hi, Ivan. Thank you for your presentation i have a question about uh, reading configuration from console or etcd mm -hmm. uh, for example if we read a file uh, it's json or yaml file mm -hmm. we read it during start application but what are mm -hmm. the best practice read configuration from a distributed store it's a uh, need to, like um, get all the configuration uh, for each key and storing it in memory or every time we need to go to the the storage when we want to get a value for configuration mm -hmm. i'm not sure that i understand your question properly but i will try to answer so viper handles this logic above the package so it doesn't uh, really care how it's treat or how it interact with etcd or console so what we provide for viper we just define the um, source like we should provide some links and credential for access to the service and then uh, just call get uh, get the value by the key, and Viper uh, handle it by its own. So it's in some period of time uh, come back to etcd or console and uh, read these uh, parameters from it, and uh, uh, it's sourced in memory actually. Yeah, so it's not some file. So it's like reading this configuration, storing it, and we use it. Uh, I mean, uh, is it good uh, when you want to get a value for some key from ETCD, mm -hmm. for example, and mm -hmm. every time when, when we need it, we go to ETCD? Uh, I'm not sure that, yes, so it uh, appears by key. 
uh, I assume that Viper read all at once by uh, so in Some Viper we should find singleton something like that like read yeah, once yeah. and store in memory. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. Viper contains all all the values in the map inside it Viper, and uh, the question is what's the source uh, of this uh, key. So we should define which key should be read by the Viper. So it uh, doesn't read if the key is doesn't define. This is a question related to the uh, pa Paulus one. Yeah, what's about the error regarding to reading the values? So for Viper, we should define these keys, and then we will able to work with them with different okay. sources. Okay, thank you. Yep, but this question will, will, will that's related to some uh, remote configuration is pretty tricky. Uh, at my practice, uh, it's very rare case. case. Uh, usually we use environment variable and this environment variable defined it by some orchestration system that's set in this variable from the console or etcd. So it's not the application responsibility to read these values. And what do you think about reload configuration on the fly without uh, redeploy servers? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Viper supports these things, and we may build our logic above that. Uh, there are some uh, system single that's corresponding to that. Uh, I don't remember exactly which one, uh, but we may build our logic for that also. So listen to the signal and then apply logic that require uh, change this configuration because even if Viper uh, reading the source and updated configuration inside it, uh, it's not the like maybe not enough for our application to update this configuration in our runtime. Does it sounds reasonable for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. So okay. you you define your own uh, like set of the configuration yeah, cool. which you can uh, reload on the fly or when you need yep. to restart the service. Uh, yep. Right. Okay. And uh, Viper uh, handle some logs uh, during this reload because, uh, as I understand, if you uh, set new value to configuration and read in this time, it's mm -hmm. will, will be a problem. So why per handle it? Uh, I assume yes, but I sh uh, <laughs> definitely recommend to recheck this. It's very easy because it's like mm -hmm. code base. Uh, as far as I remember, yeah, we doesn't provide additional logs about the wiper. We just read this, and uh, the logs is handled by its wiper by it, by itself. Mm -hmm. So okay. it should be concurrently safe. Yeah, <laughs> if we are talking about that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think you at least uh, heard something new for yourself and uh, improve your vision to the configuration and how it could be done with Go and different packages. So please use it. I would love to. I would like to discuss one more thing. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you pass the configuration around the instantiation of the object where it is needed? Do you pass the structure you uh, set up with Viper, or you pass something something other? No, we stick to the structure. So we use a pretty similar approach. We define our own uh, key uh, in our structure and uh, read information from it. And uh, in this way, we like uh, standardize, standardized working with Viper. So we use our helper function that reads the, uh, the structs, reads this uh, text, and then define all relations between the environment variables, uh, flags, all this stuff. I would like just to share our approach, how we started to do it in our new services, is that uh, in the place where the configuration is needed, we just create an interface, like a settings or properties or configuration, whatever, with a set of methods uh, that provide the values. and. Uh, 
it frees us from uh, passing the actual structure that is defined somewhere and we always can mock that for the testing mm -hmm. and on the other side on the real structure that has those uh, values yeah, configurations we just set up the methods that returns some strings or whatever is needed so we, we want to separate those things Mm -hmm. how the configuration is built and how it is used and the interface is really helpful doing that yeah but uh, also it uh, like uh, makes the work with configuration more complex am i right um yes but not a big deal you just need to s define a couple of additional methods that mm -hmm. return the fields and s that's all okay but because, it uh, really helps with testing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see. Mm. Because uh, we face the same problem, and uh, from our experience, so it's hard to maintain such configuration when we have uh, dozens of uh, interface and fields and all this around the method. And what you need, you need just the value configurations so it's like a huge price for make such flexibility for config for configuration um, maybe it's uh, easy for us because we don't have such a big configuration right now maybe yeah yes yeah, so, so as i mentioned it's really depends on what the application what the problem is and how many parameters or option do you have because when we are talking about 10 or 20 options it's not big deal how we treat it but when we are talking about hundreds of them yeah, it's become more complex to play with this interface each time. Okay, uh, so I want to say you thank you for joining me today and discuss this interesting question regarding configuration. And again, <laughs> use different techniques in your practice and um, enjoy your life <laughs> in the work. <laughs>